Okay, this, uh, I know you're seeing from, from behind, but this is Jack and this is Sam. Uh, they are Staffordshire Bull Terriers. And uh, this is uh, basically a video where we go over how you can prevent or uh, help your dog if it has a resource guarding issue, which Sam has. Now, for the record, resource guarding is not considered an aggressive behavior because once you remove the resource, the, the behavior stops. Now, Sam does this when he has a, a high value item like food or a bully stick or something like that, correct? So basically, what we do, what often what we do is we pull things away from dogs and that actually can uh, resource guarding is a natural thing for dogs to do it's just i've got good stuff you're lurking near my stuff you're, i know you're trying to covet and you're going to steal my stuff so i'm going to act aggressive to make you move away now if you have a dog who's a real resource guarder anybody tries to take anything away from the dog they will bite you and they'll bite you not in a gentle way uh, now there's a difference between this and a dog that's growling. If I'm chew if I'm a dog and I'm chewing this and one of the dogs gets too close and I growl at the dog, that's not necessarily a resource guarding, probably not. It's probably just saying, hey, back off. You're trying to sweat me for this and I'm not giving it up, this is mine, and I'm growling to say I want you to move away. Now, a dog that has a resource guarding problem, typically what they'll do is when you get close to a certain distance, they'll kind of freeze. And get, and rawr, rawr, rawr. It's kind of like that sort of behavior. You are drooling like there's no tomorrow, buddy. Um, if, yeah, by wet spots, it's not a PPM deal, it's his drool. So basically, they are hovered over it, and they kind of, when you get to a certain distance, they kind of freeze, and then they kind of start the snapping behavior, but their head is orientated down. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to do this, but I wanted to describe it first. I'm going to give him this a bully stick and try to get him to eat it right here. I'm going to have to close the door of the room when I do this so he doesn't go out there. And then I'm going to have, I have him on a leash when you're doing this. Now, a dog can resource a place, uh, an object or a thing, uh, or uh, like the kennel, a bully stick, the couch, um, or a person. And so it can be a lot of different things, it can be multiple things. So basically, every time that we forcibly take things away from a dog, we kind of can contribute to this or amplify this because we're proving through actions, yes, I'm here to steal your stuff, look, I'm forcibly taking it from you. So a quick tip, if you do have a dog that has a resource guarding problem, you want to teach them the drop. Now, the teach the drop command is super easy. This is what we call a high value item, so you would not do it with this, but let's say they have a stuffed plushie and they chew on it a lot and they're allowed to have it and it's not particularly valuable to them because they can have it at any time. What I do is I grab a, a high value training treat, something with a stink, and I touch the dog's nose and it'll have the object in his mouth. And they'll try to take it with the object in their mouth. That won't work. Don't give them any commands, wait. And, then it's, and this is only when they have something in their mouth. If they're holding it, chewing on it, don't do it then, only when they have it exclusively in their mouth. And this isn't something you necessarily sit down and rep. This is one you just have a treat handy. The dog has something in its mouth, you could get up, quietly go over, put it in front of its nose and just hold it there. As soon as the dog drops the item, pop the treat in their mouth, say the word drop, and then show no interest in the item whatsoever. So what we're saying is, if I ask you to drop what you have, I'm gonna give you something crash. Come and give you something better than what you have, and then you get original stuff back. That's a really good deal. But if we take, forcibly take stuff away or we snatch things away from dogs, we're proving that we are a thief. And then I'm not gonna give it up, and if I have, have a dog that resource guards, that's gonna amplify. Not having a drop is not gonna make your dog resource guard, but it just a, it, the drop is a good thing for every single dog to know. All right, so you wanna teach your dog to drop with what we call low value items first, so if they're allowed to have any point, then you can get them to drop a high value item later on with enough practice. Now for this, what I'm gonna do when we're doing resource guarding is we wanna use the same sort of approach is teach the dog that when we approach, we are not gonna steal your stuff, and as a matter of fact, we're gonna make your situation better. So I'm gonna to try to demonstrate this now. Uh, we have a helper off to the side who might help step in the camera and help us if we need to. I'm hoping that I can get Sam to lay down right here and chew on this thing. I'm going to get up and I'm going to close the door to this room just so that Sam doesn't come in here. Sam, Sam, come here. There you go, Sam. Sit. Sit. There we go. Sam. Sam. Well, that'll work. Um, I'm going to have you shift to where the water bottle is. So you are actually right where uh, your junior partner is, right in the corner. There we go. So what we're going to do, and let's make sure you're filming, watch me through it and film me at this point. There we go. Uh, it doesn't matter if you have them in the shot right now. All right, so basically what we're gonna do, there's gonna be a certain distance where if we get to that distance, that's where he, Sam's gonna freeze and kind of hunch over. And the freezing part is his first warning. You, what, we're gonna, what I would do, and I'm probably not gonna recreate it, I don't know if we'll recreate it on camera, but I'm gonna take uh, uh, Frank away, uh, Jack, excuse me, Frank Black, also a singer. Um, so I'm gonna walk away and then I'm gonna approach Let's say that we get to this point where his, his butt is, and that's when it causes Sam to freeze. 
We wanna do this before Sam reacts. Once Sam's lunging and growling, we push too far too fast. So this distance is about 10 feet. So what I would do is, let's say we get to 10 feet and that's when Sam freezes. I'm gonna immediately, as soon as he freezes, turn and with uh, Jack and I are gonna walk away. And then what we do is we're gonna stop at 11 feet, a foot beyond what caused the dog to freeze in the first place. I'm gonna take a high value training treat, I'm gonna throw it towards the dog, and then we're gonna walk away. Then we're gonna approach from a slightly different angle. Now this is a little bit closed, comfy quarters because of the layout of the room, but you wanna ideally approach from different angles. So now he is, these are brothers, and so he's used to trying to take his stuff, but he's not a resource gardener, he is. And this will cause an absolute fight if your dog's a real resource gardener. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna get him to come with me, Frank, and just kind of keep on, keep the camera so you can see this area right here. Jack, I keep on calling you Frank. Come here, Jack, Jack, come on, Jack, come on. There we go, buddy. Yes, we don't wanna use any force. Come on, buddy, let's get another one. Come here, come here, yes, come here. It's like, but you're taking me away from the bully stick. One more time, Jack. Come here, buddy, Jack. All right, so I'm gonna approach, before I approach, I have a treat in my hand, and I have a short leash, so we get to 10 feet, I throw a treat at him, and we turn and we walk away. Now I'm gonna pull Jack a little bit, which I normally wouldn't want to do, but Jack really wants that treat. Now, and if, you, and if your dog is a resource guard, and you have to pull the other dog away, pull the other dog away. We wanna be force free, but that can create a problem. So now I'm gonna approach from a slightly different angle. <coughs> there you go. Good job, Jack. So now we're gonna approach a slightly different angle. We stop, throw a treat, and see how he didn't lick the treat? Now we're gonna walk away. Come here, Jack. Come on, buddy. Jack. There you go. I'm luring Jack away with the treats because he doesn't want to move away from his bully stick. All right, well, he's not cooperating and he's not really resource guarding, <laughs> so I'm just gonna sit in here, which is fine. I don't have to actually recreate it in order for this to happen. What we're gonna do is make sure that he's happy so he gets a bully stick too. So basically what we're gonna do is teach and show him through our actions that when people come or dogs approach you, they're not here to take your stuff, they're here to make your situation better. And so after a while, you'll approach and the dog will just drop the object automatically. I'll give you another one. Now don't reach in if you have a dog that is a resource guard like that. He's not, he's not stiff, he hasn't growled, he hasn't given any warning, so he's not in a resource guarding mode right now because I've given him a ton of treats and several bully sticks. Um, but it's when your dog is in that mood. Now, it'll bite anyone. Now, I'm doing this with a dog on a leash. I do this with dogs that are resource guard just for people. Then I would walk just with people first. Now, first, let's say I'm at 11 feet, uh, or yeah, 10 feet is where he, he freezes. So I stop at 11 feet, and I do that like five, or however many times I need to do it until the dog seems to be pretty relaxed at 11 feet. Then next time I might push it to 10 feet. Throw the treat and I walk away. So you're throwing the treat and I'm immediately walking away. So there's no, it's clear that we're not trying to take your stuff. And at, and at first it's 11 feet, then 10 feet, then nine feet. And this is not all one practice set. This might be over the course of six or 10 or 12 or however many settings. It's important to go at the dog's pace, not at our pace. We wanna move faster than they do. It's gonna backfire. As soon as he's reacting, you push too far and he's not gonna learn anything. So. Keep a chart for how close you are. And, and if it's with people and with dogs, I would do it with the people independently first until you can get to the point where you're right here and he is comfortable with you being that there because you're proven through your actions that you're not trying to take stuff. Matter of fact, you're trying to make the situation better. Let's see if I can get him a drop. Drop. That's with a high value item, that's harder. And he's, again, don't do this if your dog is, once it gets stiff and it's in that resource guarding, do not reach for it. You will absolutely cause a bite and it will be your fault because you've watched the video and you know better. It's not the dog's fault, the dog. <laughs> it's a response. It's natural for dogs to guard in the wild. We don't need them to do it because we provide everything for them, but some dogs still just get confused. So the idea is you want to approach from different angles, and, but you're always stopping at that same 10 foot distance. Now right here, he's kind of back to the wall, but if you could do it in the middle of the room, that way you can approach from all these different angles. Now some dogs can be more sensitive being approached from the front versus the side versus the back. Front is confrontational, sideways more approachable, back you're defenseless. So a lot of dogs won't like you walking up behind them, and they definitely won't, won't like you walking up towards them. But the idea is we keep on repping it from all these different angles, and then we gradually collapse that distance, and we can be right here. And you want to get to the point where you could, again, offer the dog a treat like this. <laughs> and so he's more interested in bully stick, he's not dropping it. That would mean that we need to practice the drop a little bit more, and dropping a high value item is harder. 
but the object is not to be able to come and grab his stuff, just to get comfortable where you can come and sit down right, right next to him and he's chewing his stuff and he has no fear that we're gonna do it. Now, if it's, if it's with humans and with dogs, I would systematically do it with the humans first until you can be right here and you can eventually be petting him and he's not stiff or offering any behavior whatsoever. But then I would do it with the dog on a leash so that you prevent him from, and uh, for him, make sure you have a right size collar because he stretch these out a little bit, they can slide out of it. And if he lunges, that'll start a fight and we, that's the last thing we want to have happen. So for the dog, it's the same approach, uh, same uh, strategy, we're gonna approach from different angles at 10 feet. And if you might've gotten to 10 feet before the dog gets stiff, he might get stiff at 14 feet from a dog, or it might be 10, five feet. It doesn't matter, just keep on approaching quietly until the dog reacts. Now, they're not always gonna be a resource guard, and right now he's not. So at certain times of the day or certain uh, particular items or whatever it is, just take note, and I talked about uh, keeping our uh, exercise journal, this be something to write in the exercise journal as well so you can kind of journal it. And put a little thing on the refrigerator so everybody knows kind of what distance you're at, and it'd be important for everybody in the family to practice this. But eventually the dog learns, again, when humans are approaching me, they're not here to take my stuff, I don't have to guard my resources because they're gonna actually give me better stuff than what I have, and I get to keep my resources. Now one last little uh, tip on the drop. If you do, let's say you have to take away some underwear or a shoe or something the dog's not allowed to have, then you wanna have a bully stick or a marrow bone or something of equal greater value. So you get them to drop it, they drop it, you pop the treat in their mouth, you pick up the item and then you give them the equal or greater tra trade value. Okay. Otherwise they like, they look at the short shorter of the stick and they, then they're not gonna to wanna to do that in the future. All right, well this is Sam, this is Jack Black, and these are some tips and tricks you can use if you have a dog that likes to resource guard.